Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. And Queen takes F3. Oh! What? is going wow. on oh this is going to be a fortress i just don't see any hopes at all this is very easy just rook back and forth taking chess to the next level wow 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 yeah nothing has to say wow creating the future of the sport introducing the champions chess tour 10 months 10 tournaments the world's best players online and on TV. And Queen takes F3. Oh! What? And Queen takes F3. Oh! What is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing has to say wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. 10 months, 10 tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. So let's take someone with a random with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying events, is happening now. Tune in on Chess24. Let's take someone with a random, with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying... And Queen takes F3. Oh! What is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing has to say wow. Creating the future of the sport. 
Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. 10 months, 10 tours. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chess to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chess to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chess to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess 24 Premium members. Train like a champ with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Gelfin and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play versus a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this. No, he does not want it to happen, it seems. Okay, then we just take... And then we probably castle, which is um, quite a sad thing to do, but... Sometimes you have to accept it's inevitable. C3, so now I'll play E5. I mean, once we start playing uh, playing slow way, I, I, I think putting the, the pawn on E5 makes a lot of sense. 
you just prevent some b4 a5 queenside uh, uh, queenside play like he brings as a knight to g3 there is not much going on to be honest it's just very solid for both now i go c6 trying to get d5 on day maybe queen c7 then Bishop a2 makes sense. Okay, queen c7. He'll probably play d4. Getting at least some uh, some space advantage in the center, but it should not be should not be too much for white. Okay, let's play h6, which is never too bad, and then rook a8. So I played h6 to prevent uh, knight g5 as well. He takes on e5. Let's try to take with the knight. It takes, which I don't think is great. I think in general, you in this position, the knight on g3 is always a bit worse than uh, than the knight on f6. And the other way around as well, like the knight on g6 is always uh, is always a bit worse than uh, uh, than the knight on f3. Yeah, he manages to he manages to uh, to press a little. He has a D file now. I'll probably play rook seven followed by rook d seven just to trade the rooks, and then we'll probably get to play rook d eight, or maybe not. At some point, h five should be should be quite annoying. Yeah, he plays queen c four, which does not mean much. Okay, let's try rook d seven. Takes, takes. It's still very, very solid for uh, for both, but I feel like I feel like we start uh, outplaying him a little. So queen c five threatening. Rook takes d seven. Knight takes d seven. Queen e seven. Okay, so then we probably. Probably take on this three simply. All right, let's say we take, and maybe something like b six or uh, or maybe h five first. Yeah, let's try h five to remind him of uh, of his like little weakness on e four. Goes h four. Okay. So if we go b6, he will play queen d6. Takes, takes, rook c8, black is fine, but um, there's not much to hope for there. All right, let's say we go rook e8. So keeping in mind that um, after knight d7, queen e7 is ID, I just try to prepare it a little. Yeah, and now we go knight d7, I believe. So queen d6 is something we are uh, less worried about. And otherwise we'll reshuffle the knight to some better square. Also now h4 is quite a, quite a big pawn. Plays queen e3, wants to play queen g5 maybe, which would be a bit annoying. So we'll probably go queen b6. And uh, trade queens. I still think black is uh, kind of better here. So now we bring the king closer and then we go knight d7, knight c5. I think it's about to, to become like a real problem for. Uh, for uh, white. So knight c5 is coming after b4. We have some rook a8, forcing him to do something he does not want to do. So, yeah, slowly but surely, I think uh, I think we actually go got quite, um, quite a big advantage here. I 
I mean, at least I don't see a way for White to keep it really, really solid. Yeah, he plays b4, okay, it was a point. Now a takes b4, c takes b4, rook takes a4 is a threat. If he goes b5, then we can even take and uh, run the a pawn. Yeah, I think we will be just blown up in a few moves. Yeah, he takes, but then it basically means he's going to give up a4. Yeah, okay. all right, let's take. Let's go b5. Knight b3 is probably a good move, so he's trying to bring the knight uh, somewhat closer. So where does a black knight belong to? Like, is it c5 or b6? Uh, it's hard to tell. Okay, let's try knight b6. And now I guess rook h3. I think in terms of ideas, we are happy with uh, with the rook trade. Yeah, so now he's kind of paralyzed, I believe. So we go knight a4. Yeah, and rook b3 runs into knight c5 check. So we win an exchange and yeah, and the game eventually. All right, thanks for the game. Um, We finally have a big name here, Mr. Chopper, who is very dangerous, first of all, because he's uh, like, his rating is um, really high, and secondly, because he wants to play, wants to play with no, uh, with no increment, which is, uh, which is always terrifying to me. But okay, I'll go to it. If I lose, I lose. So knight c3, plays Ragozin. Okay, let's try g3. And bishop g2, castles. Yeah, all this stuff is a sort of a well known theory. I played it a few times as white. So the point is to get like e4 and uh, then, you know, sometimes. This uh, this pawn is in the center, bring away something. So this bishop d2 was quite smart as far as I, as I remember, but I don't remember why exactly. I think b3 was the point. So bishop d2 helps to helps to prepare b3 in some way. Although I actually failed to failed to explain why exactly. It's obviously still fine for black, though. We are just a pawn down, hoping for some long-term compensation. Pretty, pretty much as always. Okay, let's take with the bishop. He will probably play bishop b7 simply, yeah, and then we probably go e4. Yeah, I think we are uh, both playing in quite a reasonable way so far. Now he will probably play a6, like he wants to play knight before, but then a7 is hanging, so he goes a5 instead, which is also reasonable. So if we take on a5, what's the trick? Like before, trying to trap, trying to trap um, the bishop. Eh, probably, somehow it does not look convincing to me, but yeah, probably it works, d5. Takes, takes, knight takes c5, rook a5, c6 or c5 maybe. Okay, whatever. Let's say we we believe in it. Just go h4, which is always useful here. He plays h6. Now we can consider taking again. Like our position probably improved a little comparing to, to the previous line. You can also just play h5 simply. Yeah, but in general, unfortunately, I will have to speed up at some point. As, uh, yeah, this way he will just... Yeah, just force me to, you know, play some random moves in the time scramble. Okay, here I thought queen e2 is a move, like we keep an eye on, uh, on e4 and... Uh, 
attack b5. No, oh, maybe knight g4. Uh, plays queen b6, logical. Let's play rook b1 to prevent something. I don't know what exactly. In general, I want to bring knight to e3. Then I want to play queen g4 and d5. Uh, he plays bishop f6 himself. Okay. Yeah, maybe this is something I should have prevented, actually. Uh, so how should I play this? Knight g4, bishop takes d4. Does not really work, it seems. All right, then I just go e5. But e5 is always a very, very bad sign in this um, kind of position. It basically means you're, uh, you're kind of outplayed. Yeah, now I'll try some gamble with d5, but should be quite bad. Ed queen f3 is a point, but it's, you know, not something good enough. Um, probably even for uh, for equality, I'm afraid. Okay, takes. Yeah, I don't think he will blunder rook. Yeah, he doesn't. Can I play rook d3? Yeah, rook d1, and now he will play king h8. Yeah, and I will play queen e4. And then we get a four, but it's still, um, yeah, still not clear what we're trying to to achieve exactly here. Takes on b three, which I kind of failed to calculate, but it does not feel right, and plays queen c two, which I think is still still not great, but yeah, I will probably. I'll probably misplay it somehow. Yeah, h6 was the point. Queen g6, okay, let's say we take, take, take on b4. Go for a draw, I believe. Ah, no, but this is not a draw, actually. I'm actually pawned down. Well, I mean, it has to be a draw, but uh, he has all the rights to play on, obviously. Yeah. No, it is not even a draw. All right. I lost some time exactly as predicted. Fine. But yeah, anyway, it was a it was a very ni nice game by him. I think I was um, completely out outplayed for uh, for uh, the most of the game. Now we will play the Fide Arena GM, who is also one of the big names here. 2700. It's not a joke. Bishop c4? Okay, this is a joke. Uh, I don't know, e5 maybe? Maybe e4. Yeah, this is some weird... Uh, weird Fre uh, French defense coming. Like, he will play... We'll probably play c4 one day. And then the, the bishop on b3 will not be too bad, I believe. Okay, c4, how do we how do we react to such stuff? Maybe just bishop e6. Yeah, takes, takes. Followed by knight c6. Black is obviously better, but um, it is not... I was about to say it is not much, but actually maybe it is much. He is sort of paralyzed. Castling kingside is always dangerous because of some um, some random attack coming. I'll play bishop a just to have a uh, queen d6 in case of castling short. Yeah, so now he will just play bishop d2, rook c1, but then he has to play something. Like one day... Uh, Playing with the king in the center could become really dangerous. I'm probably about to play knight e7, knight f5, knight h4, and to start um, yeah, attacking his king size as well. He 
Tempo is 92. It's probably try, uh, trying to uh, to prepare Castling short anyway, but I mean, it does not feel like uh, Castling short will ever be will ever be good enough. Plays knight h3. Okay, so what's wrong with the knight h4? Maybe there is nothing wrong, actually. Plays king f1. Okay, then we just take and play rook c8. Activating the rook. Yeah, he brings the, the knight to 2 and now he will try to play king g1, h2, I believe. I'll just go g5, which is not exactly an attacking move, but I'm just trying to prevent knight f4. Okay, so he plays knight c3. Mm. Yeah, we have many tempting moves here. You can just play, play king g7, for instance. Yeah, maybe it is good enough. Yeah, he has a check, but then I think we just take and play h6. And now we can uh, we can think of some f5, f4 plans. Bishop b3, don't know where this is going exactly. Okay, let's try f5. He plays bishop d1. Yeah, this is quite sad for white, I must say. Okay, let's play. Uh, I mean, I have a trick. I can play knight f3, g takes, bishop f7. Dropping the queen. If he plays bishop takes, I can also play bishop f7, right? Yeah, so it seems to work, which is a bit surprising, but okay. Why not? After knight takes e4, there is always d takes e4, and uh, the idea is still there. Yeah, it seems to work. Well, it's sort of a cheapo, but anyway, after let's say rook f8, I think it's very, 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 very tough for white. F4 is coming and stuff, I mean, should just be bad. Yeah, he takes, bishop f7. And takes, okay, queen takes. And he's trying to bring the, the bishop to b3. To come up with uh, at least some counterplay. Which, no, he resigns. There will be no counterplay, all right? Thanks for the game. Um, fine. Yeah, but I learned from uh, for, from my mistakes, so I will not play, um, I mean, I will not play the uh, no, no, no increment game again. So losing one game is the limit, like I can gamble once, but uh, you will not flag me two times, people. All right, let's say bishop g5, and maybe knight d2, h6. Yeah, so for some reason, bishop takes f6 is considered to be harmless here, but I could not, I could not really get it for, uh, for quite some time. I thought like bishop d3, c3, queen e2. Uh, you have the center. Like back is probably okay, but harmless. Felt like um, like an underestimation of white's chances here. Yeah, so let's say c3. Goes b6. Okay, so queen e2 maybe. Yeah, maybe we go bishop a6. So it's it's sort of a crossroad. Like it's either we go for bishop a6 and castle short and play it slow. Or we castle long and try to do, uh, to checkmate. 
On the, on the other hand, like the the black uh, king is not on J8 yet, so sometimes queen e7 followed by castling long is also possible. Anyway, bishop a6 is considered to be kind of smart in this kind of a position. And so is h4, but I don't know why. I'm still uh, try trying to combine ideas, like uh, technically we can still castle long. Some h4, g4 could become an issue one day. On the other hand, there is nothing wrong with playing g3 or h5 and then castling for uh, playing king f1. Yeah, he plays e5, which I think is a scenario where we go d5. And then, like, the whole setup starts to make sense to me. Can also take on e5. But okay, let's go, let's go d5 maybe. Yeah, and then we go back happily. So, so now we probably want to play g4, or maybe not. It's hard to tell. Yeah, after g6, I think you always go h5. Yeah, and after g5, I think uh, white is in a great shape here. So this f5 square is really weak now. So we need to bring the knight there. I'll probably play knight f1 for that reason. So we go knight g3 f5, and then we probably go knight h2 g4. And black is kind of paralyzed. We we only need not to blunder some f5 at some point, but um, I don't see it coming yet. Yeah, it's so nice to have the knight on the front. Yeah, and it's still not, not clear where uh, where the, the the king belongs. Now I think with all the all the uh, positional trumps we have, we can simply castle short and try to win in a technical way. But there is also a plan uh, with uh, I don't know castling long and playing just a four, which is probably quite nice for white as well. But we simply don't need it, I believe. He plays b5, so he wants to play b4, and then he will kind of uh, kind of block the the queen side and try to hold um, the king side. But also, I don't think he will manage, to be honest. Also, it is not exactly a block. Like if we will need a, need the game dramatically, there we will play b3 followed by a3. C6, okay. So should I finally castle or maybe rook d1 first? Yeah, rook d1 is uh, kind of logical. So if he takes on d5, we we want to take with the rook. He plays b3, which is also logical. a3. Not gonna help him activate the rook. Yeah, and he plays rook d8. So now we can just castle and uh, bring everybody to to the D file to increase the pressure. I could have taken on H6 for like really long time, but don't really want to. Takes takes. Yeah, then we go rook F to D1. Why is knight B7? Which is not something I really get. Ah, so he simply, yeah, he, he simply w wanted to protect d6. Okay, so let's play uh, queen d3. Goes a5. Can we simply take? Yes, we can. And now it's still very good. Maybe queen f3. 
Knight takes g7 is a threat. Yeah, and he's uh he's um allowing it. All right. Uh, what else is there? Mr. Dangerous Riot. Okay, this is a must one. Once again. It's probably not exactly fair to, to the other people to have, uh, you know, favorites. But on the, on the other hand, we are all human beings, so why not to have favorites? Actually, don't I don't remember why why exactly I have uh, like I have uh, sympathy for for this guy. I feel like there was a reason. He was probably in, uh, nice to me in the chat or something. But anyway, once you start be being friendly to someone, it's uh, I mean it's quite a problem to to turn it around. So don't be friendly, people. All right. So th the way he plays makes me think he's going to castle long here. Yeah, and after g4, I'm uh, sort of sure. So now I can try h6. I mean, I want to uh, to keep the, the, the bishop on the diagonal, so I want to play bishop h7. G takes e5, h takes g5, looks kind of okay for black. Don't know if it is okay, but I think it should be okay. Bishop takes e7 is also there technically, but then we go bishop takes e7 and take on h4. He can play king d2 there and continue the game once again. Don't know who is better and why, but uh, kind of looks reasonable. Yeah, and then we, so if you play this way, we just go to h7. And uh, we are happy to to have kept the, uh, the bishop on the right diagonal. He goes bishop d3 to trade it, which makes sense. I don't think we can avoid it though. Takes, takes. Now maybe c5 makes sense. Or maybe we just play, uh, we just play bishop d6. So queen b5 check is not exactly a threat. We can simply play knight d7. And I don't think he's ever happy to take b7. Maybe bishop b7 was a bit more, uh, more, more, more accurate there, by the way, but it's still OK. Now I think it's quite likely that both sides will cast along. And then all, all of a sudden we'll have a slow positional game, which I would probably fail to predict judging from uh, from the opening moves. Yeah, he takes. This is always double-edged, like he, he doubles our pawns, but on the other hand, we have the C file for the rook. So I think now it's it's a bit more dangerous for, uh, for white to cast along. On the other hand, it's also less likely now that we'll cast long. So maybe he simply plays king f2 and then s s sort of waits for us to decide. Okay, so let's play queen a5. Trying to bring some pieces closer. Knight b6 followed by knight c4. It's not exactly an attack yet. Now we can probably consider... Uh, Probably consider keeping as as a king in the center, like king d7, and uh, and just play it. I like queen a3 for some reason. Don't know why. Probably stops a4, but I was not that worried about a4. Plays knight c3. Okay, can we just play a6? To keep it simple, we we can also play. Um, we can actually play many different moves here. I don't want to to allow knight b five though. So let's play a six. I mean, I'm not sure knight b five would be exactly a drama, but 
Yeah, maybe it makes sense to prevent it. He's probably about to switch for some plays the center. Something like e4. No, he simply plays king a1. So it's probably time to decide what to do with the king. So I don't think we want to cast long anymore. Like our queen side, queen side prospects look, look way too good. Rook c1. Okay. Yeah, it's a strange position. So once I once I castle short, he will start attacking. On the other hand, now I'm not too worried about something like g5. He plays queen, king b2. Okay, makes sense. Trying to prepare something. Okay, let's try king d7. He plays knight d2. So he probably wants to play uh, c4 after all. Or maybe c3 simply. Anyway, I guess it's logical to play rook c8. Yeah, he plays c3. Okay. So what should I play here? Yeah, it's quite a weird... Uh, quite a weird uh, scenario all in all. Like very... Very non-standard game for... Uh, I mean, at least by my standards, in terms of positional ideas. So if we go knight b6, some queen h7 could be there one day. Feels like we have b4 and it should work, but... Um, okay, let's um, let's try it. He simply plays a3. Um, still no threats. Okay, let's try some rook b8. Fishing for... Uh, fishing for knight c4 check, maybe. Yeah, I think we get it, no? This was quite a strange move by him. Yeah, after king a2, I thought it's still sharp. But, um, yeah, I don't think black is really worse. Although maybe he's worse, I don't know. Yeah, he takes, now we go bc and uh, rook takes b3 wins. All right. Um, okay. Let's play someone else. Okay, let's try one C4 this time. Is C4 exactly a surprise? What's, uh, what's wrong? F5, wow. And this is how we play chess. Okay, now it's a stream. And D5. D5 is something... Something that does not look brilliant to me. Yeah, how should I play this? I'm sort of uh, sort of really surprised, to be honest. So can I just go e4 and then knight g5? e4, he has f takes e4 zone. Like, e4 was a bit smarter, one more earlier. f takes e4, knight g5, e5 does not look good, to, to be honest. I can also play it simple, like g3 and so on, but this is a bit... This looks a bit soft for um, for the position we have. After g3, I'm slightly worried about e5. e4, f4, knight e4 does not look right at all. Okay, I can simply play e3, obviously, as well. But e3, once again, it's not exactly 
the move you you want to play when you think you're much better. Maybe I'm not much better. Then it explains a lot. Okay, let's try to be brave. Let's go g3 and after e5 simply simply take on e5. Like I am always I mean always a believer in this e5 pawn sacrifices, but yeah, on the other hand he he does not does not need this pawn on f5 at all. It's only help for white, so maybe yeah, e5, d takes e5 is just better for white. So he wants to play e5 here probably. But then having bc, we are not exactly forced to, uh, to take on e5. Still an option, but uh, I mean, we are definitely not forced to do it. Yeah, he goes e5. We can also play it very simple, like knight takes e5, take everything, go f4. But then I have a feeling it could be kind of okay for black. In general, I probably uh, played like an idiot now. Like if I allow e4, then even this f5 move starts to make sense. Um, we have an increment though, so I can I can simply think here. Mm, yeah. On the old play zone, people are way more tricky than the new one. The new one, you win all the games easily. And here, I was crushed once, and uh, things keep happening here. Probably time to make a move, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't like most of them. Okay, let's try queen b3, maybe. And yeah, then I'll try to speed up a little. Like after e4, we go knight g5. And then he has some queen f6, and then we probably go h4 and play the game. I mean, not a big fan of, uh, of our position, to be honest. But at least it's sharp enough. Yeah, h4. Then I'll try to try to reshuffle a little. Like a dream scenario is to get knight h3. Then somehow trade the bishops, go knight f4 and d3. Then white would definitely be better. Another question is uh, h6. Like we are not forced to take uh, to go away, but after knight h3, he has some knight xd4 maybe. But then we probably take and simply play rook b1. And uh, yeah, and it, it simply works. Okay, finally something uh, something good to find out in this game. Yeah, so knight h3. Like I am not going to to fight for a tempo even. So he allows queen takes b7. What is this exactly? Okay, whatever. Let's uh, let's try it. Like if it works, he will win some brilliant game, which has never been something we try to avoid. Yeah, maybe just king d7 and you play. I mean, it's a bit strange to start thinking now. I expected him to have a plan. And I mean, it does not feel like white is winning, at least to me. Just looks sharp. Yeah, king d7, bishop g5. Queen somewhere, then we go e3. Try to get bishop b5. Yeah. H6, okay, I guess now bishop b5 works. Yeah, he takes, but then it should be very, very bad. Then we just have knight takes g5 and the end. So this is basically winning for white. 
Okay, so I don't know, bishop c4 maybe. Queen d7, okay, we are happy with the trade when we are uh, two pawns up. Yeah, okay, now we'll, we'll probably win it slowly but surely. Don't know why I decided to, to play h5. But it should not be should not be too bad as well. Okay, a5, so he's trying de desperately to come up with a threat there, but I don't see it. Like a4, we take with a check even, and then we go back automatically. Yeah, now rook e6 followed by rook f6. And yeah, we probably win too, too many pounds here. Okay, now once again check on rook f6. Now we grab another one. Okay, so we keep uh, keep insisting on a trade. Never really want to, to allow some rook h2 or something, even with a we stand spawns up. Yeah, but this is uh, like simply completely lost. Let's have a let's have fun actually. Let's give up a bishop and uh, show that this is still completely lost for black. Yeah, so now we'll simply try to bring all the pawns there. Okay, e4, h5, um, e5, I believe, followed by d5. Okay. Okay, now maybe king of five. D6. Yeah, it's quite easy to play here, I must say, E6. Okay, let's not forget about the H pawn. Okay, king G6, then we go with five of six. Okay, now we start promoting them. H7. Takes, okay, now we can promote another one. Okay, he resigns. Fine. Uh, yeah, so the start of the game was actually very, very sharp. It's kind of disappointing to to find out people can play a five d five against you and still get a brilliant position. So I, um, yeah, I definitely misplayed it in the opening. Um, what else is there? Rudy Kmakarian. Okay, fine. So this this guy, I think, uh, is the guy we are about to play. I, I think he got a wild card uh, for the World Cup. So he's no joke. But he wants to play with an increment, which is uh, inspiring. Okay, I played the Slav. And now maybe h6. And bishop h4. Yeah, so this dc4, g5 is, uh, is a crazy line. Okay, let's try something simple like knight bd7 maybe. I guess you can play this way as well. After CD, we go ED. CD is probably the move, but I know him. Uh, he's quite a sharp player, so it's quite likely that he will avoid this. Yeah, E3, Bishop E7. I think it's considered to be like slightly better for white, but it's very, very solid and uh, very easy play for black. Like you castle and then you pretty much uh, pretty much take on c4, whatever happens. And then you go like b5, bishop b7, and try to get c5. Yeah, so I guess here we just take and play b5. And probably play bishop b7 simply. And then I think the lines are supposed to be okay for black. Yeah, but it's been a while since I looked at this, to be honest. So, a3, yeah, I probably go e5. 
I'm trying to get B4 followed by C5 anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit strange to to be playing that solid, but somehow, yeah, sometimes we, we need a break. So what do you play here? You probably go before simply and then, and then you like see what happens next. Yeah, I guess before takes, takes, maybe 94 is what he wants. No, he takes here, okay. Okay. It feels like we just take and go back. But yeah, maybe there is something better. Maybe on the other hand, maybe we don't need something better. All right, so let's say we take, go back. And keep preparing our um, slow c5 plan. He can play knight c5 everywhere, but then I don't think it's uh, it's ever much like we just take, start attacking c5. Otherwise, we'll probably just play queen b6 and um, get c5 in. He plays queen c2, which is. Uh, Kind of multifunctional. So if I go rook c8, what's the point? He will probably play knight c5 there. Okay, but then I think even the tempo down, it's never, it's never a problem. And we also have some, uh, some takes, takes, bishop takes c5. No, then there is rook fd1. Okay. Then we just play it simple somehow. Maybe queen c7 first. I probably misplayed it a little. Like you are supposed to be, you are supposed to be attacking c5 already in, in this position. And what I uh, what I did was kind of okay in terms of ideas, but uh, it's probably a bit too slow. Yeah. So he plays queen c4. He's probably first to win this b4. Pound, which is unpleasant. Okay, then I guess we we get a chance to trade uh, trade the bad bishop at least, and then we just uh, play rook b8, bishop f6, saying we have some pressure on the b pawn, and there is not much to worry about. But yeah, again, I'm definitely uh, definitely doing uh, the wrong thing. Yeah, so now maybe. Maybe queen a5 is a move. I guess we go to uh, go to, to a stage where we try to trade a lot of stuff and uh, and kind of save it after uh, massive complications. Yeah, I should not have played solid. Not that I expect us to lose this, but. Uh, it could have been way more pleasant game. 94. Okay. Okay, so at least we can take and play rook a6. If we take on c5, he wants to take on c6. It seems to work to me. Okay, no problem. Then we just take and go rook a6. We will probably chase um, this knight away eventually. Uh, he says we will not. Okay, makes sense. Okay, maybe we just uh, maybe we just play bishop f6 for the moment. And then maybe in some of the lines we simply take on d4, and after e takes d4, we double on b file and say uh, say uh, it's okay. Rook c4. Can we play g5? Also, do we need to play g5? I don't think we need to. On the other hand, we can play it. 
Okay, let's go G5. I'm in sort of sharp. I'm like semi... Semi playing for win. But yeah. It's not going to be... Not going to be good enough, I'm afraid. Yeah, rook a2, rook d6 maybe. Then we trade everything. Yeah, rook d6, we have to take, takes, takes. Uh, so let's see where he goes now. He offered to draw at some point, I believe, but I think now we'll we'll try to to play this a little. Uh, so is there a checkmate somewhere? Like f five? Okay, I have to play f five anyway. I mean, I have to try f five. Is uh, more correct maybe? King g six. Nah, it's just a draw. Takes, takes. Yeah. There is not much to hope for here. Okay, we can bring the king to, to the file. And try to trick him there somehow, like king, uh, king e5. But yeah, it's not going to work. He plays king f2. Now it could actually could actually start working. King d6. King e5 back, yeah no. Still the draw. Don't know why I said no to, to draw for. It is definitely the draw, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is this one? He will, he will not lose, I'm afraid. Yeah, and if or. Okay, enough is enough. Let's just let's just take and um, stalemate him. Yeah. Okay, very solid professional game, which is not a. Uh, a complimentary um, thing to say. Okay. It's kind of difficult to find someone someone I could beat. It was actually very good back in the days when uh, um, When like there are not too uh, too many challenges from strong guys, and then you could play less strong guys, um, and not feeling that you are hiding away. Okay, Mister Blunder Panda. This is also a must game. This guy, I think I uh, started play, uh, playing him every single time after. Uh, I mean, after I, I realized his nickname is Blunder Panda. Okay, let's take on d5 and play e3. This time we'll try to be more more creative, maybe castle queen side. Okay, bishop f4. h6 kind of makes castling queen side more, uh, more tempting, because in some lines we go g4, g5. He plays g5 himself, which I think... Uh, Gets like uh, gets us back to some really big theory. 
as that it feels to me, you know, boss, we don't have a single idea on. I think knight h5, bishop e, bishop e5 is how it normally starts. Knight b6. Okay, let's play, uh, I don't know, bishop d3, bishop e2, maybe bishop d3. Ah, so he wants to play it with a bishop on g7. Okay, I don't think we're too worried about it. Fine, so let's try to be consistent. Let's just cast along and uh, then try to look for some ideas. Queen d7 runs into knight e5. Maybe h4 was a bit more precise. But I can still play h4. Yeah, no, I think it's kind of uh, kind of bad for black. Whenever you cast along, you run into something. And uh, yeah, you cannot keep keep the king in the center forever as well. He plays knight d7. Mm. F4 maybe? Yeah, let's try F4. Simply try uh, trying to get a 5. If he takes only 5, we'll always take with a deep on. Okay. The question sort of remains. Castling long is still very dangerous. Yeah, he has to come up with something smart here. Now it feels like Black is a. Uh, I mean, maybe not okay, but it feels like he his position improved a little. Yeah, Bishop G four. Bishop G four makes sense. Maybe it is exactly that something that he had to find. Um. Yeah, this is a bit annoying. Like if we go bishop e2 and trade, then he will probably he will probably castle long one day and uh maybe he will not checkmate. I mean maybe we will not checkmate. After bishop g4, rook f1. Yeah, maybe there is nothing wrong with rook f1. I mean he probably plays g takes here. And then after he takes, he, I mean, will probably castle somewhere. But yeah, th this whole h4 thing was not exactly brilliant, it seems. He can also castle long now. Then I guess we'll switch for... Uh, Collecting after um, h takes g5 and bishop f5 check. He plays queen c5, which I missed completely, but it uh, doesn't look too, too scary yet. So what is the point? He wants to take on a 3 Can I simply play king b1? Yeah, I probably have to play king b1. Or maybe I don't have to, but it, I mean, it feels natural anyway. Queen takes a three uh, looks really dangerous for uh, for black in my opinion. Bishop f uh, Bishop f two was also reasonable with the idea of e four. But King b one is that useful that you need it pretty much everywhere. So why not to play it here? Yeah. So now I think we're back to Bishop f five check business. Yeah. Let's say we start with a check. And then takes, takes, maybe f takes g5. Um, or maybe we just take f7, by the way. If we take on f7, it feels natural to play f takes g5 to, uh, to open the, 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 the diagonal for the bishop. 
But it also feels natural to take on f7 simply and uh, keep a very nice structure. And also play h takes, in fact. h takes, knight c4. Easily a bit annoying. Okay, let's. Um, I think it's good for white either way, to be honest. Okay, let's just take here. He takes on f2 even while. Oh, on f3. So, what's wrong with bishop f2? He has queen d3 check there. What's wrong with rook f3? There is nothing wrong, I believe. Or maybe there was something. So, he wants knight c4, which makes sense. Am I getting outplayed again? Starts to feel this way. On the other hand, it's not exactly made. So he takes on g2 first. Let's say rook f1. Knight c4. Yeah, so we have to play rook f2, I believe. Yeah, but then we go king c2, I thought. And we kind of uh, kind of win too, too much material. Okay, takes. D4. Oh, all right. So now he's definitely lost, but we have to be have to be a bit precise. Now I just want to take go e6, c7, and rook f8. Has to be enough. Queen takes h8 is also good, by the way. Okay. What else is there? Yeah, Mr. Pikuru. Wow, this is a really strong guy. I think we had some uh, some epic battle of uh, of three games during one of my Bunter Blitz sessions. And uh, he won one of them, which actually made me made me play two more. So yeah, this guy is no joke for sure. That's why we are upon down on move five. Okay. Yeah, B three. So this line is kind of interesting. Um, it's pretty much uh, the same scenario that that. Uh, that we witnessed in the game are lost. Like you sacrifice pawn here for some long-term initiative. Which is not necessarily brilliant. But it does make some sense. Yeah, a5 is an important move to prevent um, bishop a5. Okay, bishop b7, I guess we just castle. And uh, yeah, wait for a chance to, to attack something maybe. Plays knight d7. So what was the point here exactly? I actually don't remember. Okay, maybe knight c3. I think there was a line where you have to. Uh, where you have to play um, queen d1, queen e2 is white. But uh, yeah, now I mean it looks a bit too deep for me to be honest. So he plays um, he plays a5, bishop a6. Maybe we just go rook c1. I mean this will uh, definitely slow slow us down a little. But um, on the other hand, the c6 pawn is weak now. So we'll just try to win it. Where's bishop b5? This kind of allows d5. But maybe d5 is not great. So d5, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, c takes d5. And we have literally nothing, which is a bit surprising to me. That means we have to do something else. Maybe just bring the knight to c4. Yeah, why not? I don't like this knight on a4 too much. I mean, they say it kind of uh, 
it kind of sto stops a lot of things. But we don't do we don't want to stop things. We want to do things somehow. Yeah, he plays h6. Okay. Bishop f4. So he he prepared castling now. And then we play queen e2. And try to get some uh, e5, queen e4 battery maybe. This is very thematic by. Uh, by white, I believe. Like I don't know if, if it's good here exactly, but in general, it's it's a very important idea for the whole line that you wait for h6 and then you go queen e2, e5, queen e4. I think many of the lines were based on this idea. So let's hope this one is not an exception. Uh -huh, so he he's preparing the as a setup with a with a knight on a fate, which once again makes sense. I can play bishop. I don't know. Bishop d two for the moment. Don't know why. Can also play g four. Okay, let's have fun. Let's play g four. G four is definitely a bad move, but it's. Uh, it's probably not that bad that it looks, and it's f uh, fun enough to give it a chance. So after knight takes g4, okay, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, so now can we just continue the same way, like h4? So if he will take on h4, we have some knight d6. Which, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's not brilliant. But at least it kind of makes sense. Okay, now we go knight c to e5. I think he weakens the, uh, the queen side a bit too much. So we kind of remaneuver to, uh, to the queen side now. Place queen b6. Okay, but then we are back to king side maybe. Just g5 and so on. Um, yeah, maybe g5 is the move. Okay, takes, takes. He'll probably take on g3 and play c5. And then we'll probably try to, to bring everybody to the h-file. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, okay, maybe just king g2 for the moment. Preparing rook h1. He plays rook d8. So now it's probably time to go in and play, uh, play rook h1. He plays f6, which is kind of a relief, to be honest. Feels like it allows many things. Maybe we just take... G6 is also tempting. Maybe G6? Yeah, maybe G6. So the point is that I want to do, to trade the knights as uh, after knight, knight f3 takes e, e5, we have a queen h3 idea, which seems to be very strong. Okay, so I guess rook takes h7 works anyway. Also, maybe we don't need it. Maybe I just go rook e1. Not show off. Yeah, I can only play one move, unfortunately. Okay, let's take. Rook takes d4, I guess allows rook h1, which is very nice. Does it? I think it does. So rook h8 mate is a threat. I think we are about to win this. All right, thanks, uh, thanks for the game. This was a nice one. He, he offered three match actually, which I will accept. As uh, yeah, I think this guy is really tough, and he definitely deserves one more game. Why I keep playing this uh, one e five? It's always boring. Um. How to make it fun here? Okay, let's try b5, bishop c5. 
one time. Not that the, uh, the opening is bad, but if he will if he will play one of the main lines, I will probably have to do something stupid not to show the notes. Or maybe I will not. Can you castle here? Or maybe h6 first, I don't know. I think in general h6 is never too bad in these positions. Okay, bishop h3. So let's try this uh, sharp thing allowing d5 everywhere. How do you get it? Maybe rook e8. Rook e1. Yeah. Not that much of a drama so far. Rook b8 is normally a useful move. Goes a3, preparing bishop a2, that also makes sense. Um. Yeah, I don't know how to play this. I mean, I had some knight a5, c5 plan in mind. But now I start to doubt that it's really good. Okay, let's play bishop d7 for the moment. It should not really hurt. He'll probably just play bishop a2. And the question will remain. But now we probably threaten, uh, yeah, exactly. We probably threaten to, to take on e4, and that's why he plays win b1. But now I guess knight a5 looks a bit more tempting. And then after bishop a2, no, he plays bishop c2, okay. So after c5, b4 is probably his idea. Which is not exactly winning as well, by the way. We can also take on d4 and then play knight c4. We can also take on d4 and play c5. I mean, we can do many things and all of them are bad, probably. Okay, let's try to, to remind him of the king side a little. Knight h5. So with the queen on d1, it normally runs into something, but here, uh, I mean, maybe we have a chance to play queen of six, knight f4 at some point. It feels like we are doing the, the wrong thing at the king side, but on the other hand, I don't see like how exactly we can be punished here. So maybe queen f6, continue the plan. And then we go knight c6, knight f4, g5 even. White is probably better, but it is very, very sharp. Maybe he is actually not better. But when I play this as black, it always feels to me like I am slightly worse. But the good, the good thing is that it always feels like a mess anyway. And I feel like, okay, if I will lose, uh, I mean, it will not be only because of the opening. Place king h2. Okay, let's continue this g5. I could also play c6 simply. But yeah, I mean, I somehow want to play sharp. Yeah, he plays g3, we retreat. Now we are probably back to this um, c6 business in some of the lines. Yeah, maybe now we go c6. To, to open up the position a little. I don't think g5 is really contradicting uh, Opening up the center, like I mean, it may look as a as a weak king, but in fact, I don't see a way for for white to attack it. He plays c4. 
bc knight xc4 is a point. So we just prevent it. We can actually consider uh, playing c5 one day. He plays b3. b3 makes it an easier choice, I believe, or maybe not. Okay, let's try. Can we play h5? I guess we can play h5. Yeah, and then we have to play h4, but I don't think it's such a bad, uh, such bad news. I can also take on c4. No, I don't want to. Okay, h4. And queen g7. Um, okay, maybe queen of six back for the moment. Yeah, the way I played was probably uh, probably over optimistic. I think we are getting outplayed here. I mean, it's not too bad. Maybe we were not even worse, but I think um, his position improved a little. Can I play king g7 here? Nine g4. Okay, I have to take. But then I can take on c4 now. This is not that bad. He takes with a bishop, allowing c takes d5. Then e d5, and we play the sharp thing. Okay, so queen f5 maybe. Knight e4 is coming anyway. Yeah. Ah, so he's actually attacking two pawns. So it's not that sharp, it's just very, very bad for black, maybe. Yeah, I cannot do much about it, unfortunately. Yeah, and he takes. Yeah, it's quite bad for black, I must say. There is not much to do about it, unfortunately. Okay, let's play e5. Don't want to give up the pawn for free. Maybe rook b4. Try to bring the knight to f6 or even h6. Yeah, I can go there. We probably take and play knight f6. Yeah, maybe I did not have to take, but who knows. Yeah, probably I did not have to take, actually. On the other hand, we have some sort of long-term potential here. Maybe 495 even. Can I play it? Rook f6 is there, but yeah, okay, he goes here, takes. But this one we should actually hold. Okay, you have to take, right? I mean, what's uh, what's the problem? Yeah, and this has to be quite a simple draw. Uh, okay, three. He offers some a draw and I accept it. Okay. Uh two two interesting games against this guy, but we have to have to play someone else, I believe. Um Okay. Yeah, I want to play this guy with um uh, with uh, Moro at his picture. Ah, yeah, he plays the thing, of course. I mean, I should not have to move d4. Okay, let's try something fancy here, like takes and bishop b5. I guess there is such a line. And a6, e5 is a point. But I don't know. I don't know what to play here. Like, I just know it exists. So what could be the point of this strange play? Queen h4 maybe? Okay, queen h4 looks reasonable. So 
after f is 7, obviously queen takes e7 is a point. And then after queen e3, um, black looks okay to me. Now on the contrary, e takes f6, castles, bishop e7 is met by, uh, by rook h6, and bishop g7 is met by rook e1 check. He will probably have to do something else, not that I'm... Not that I'm saying white is better, but I kind of like what we are doing. There is also a strong move that I will not mention for the moment. Um, but I'll just hope he will not play it. Okay, now I can name it. Actually, rook a4 was, uh, was quite annoying. Okay, so maybe knight b5. I don't think we have a shot here, actually. And if we don't, we go knight b5, but I'm just trying to trying to find something like knight takes d5, queen d5, queen f6, rook g8, there is nothing. Um, yeah, okay. Have to go knight b5. Don't like it that much. But we probably have to do it. Yeah, bishop g7, that's why I didn't like it, actually. So now he has time to castle, and he will probably be okay. Let's trade the bishop. Yeah, I don't think it makes sense to, to postpone taking on g7. Or maybe it does, actually. No, I don't think it does. Okay, let's just take and play knight uh, d4. So this was sort of my idea, we are actually attacking b4 in quite a weird way. Like, we want to take on c6 and take on b4, and we also want to take on e6. So from far away, I did not really see, like, a completely comfortable way here for black, but as a feeling it is that it exists. Yeah, this is one of the options, so he simply decided to give up before, and... Um, kind of hope that it's just fine. Maybe it is. Yeah, and maybe queen c3 or queen d4. Don't know which is better. Maybe the knight belongs to d4. On the other hand, queen c3 allows queen b6. He can play queen b6 anyway. Now it's hard to tell which is better. Okay, whatever. Let's say queen d4. He can still play queen b6. And it shouldn't be... Shouldn't be much if something for white. But then at least we have some potential with this A pawn running. Yeah, queen b6 is what he plays. Yeah, it would be nice to have a trick here, but I actually don't see it. And if we have to have to, to allow the queen trade, which I think we have to, then it's quite um, quite the sad news. Takes takes c5, black is never worse. Trying to remaneuver uh, the knight somewhere, maybe to d3. Bishop c6 was a bit strange move though. Maybe it's still okay. Can I play rook e7? Rook b7 allows knight e6 check, I believe. That was a boundary by him.
But I think in general the whole the whole concept with the bishop on c6 was not correct. I think the bishop belongs to f5. And he has to play like d4, bishop f5, attack c2, and go c4 one day. Um, okay, thanks for the game. So, uh, I think the, the time is up, but we will play one more game probably. There is a, there is some three 3,000 guy who wants to play with an increment. So yeah, I'll probably play this one and um, and then we'll call it a day. Let's play something fancy. Let's play the Banco Gambit maybe. Okay, let's play it with E6. And yeah, this bishop e7 is kind of not completely pointless. Yeah, then I guess you cancel. Bishop c4. I think this was possible as well. Maybe we just uh, take on d5 here. There is also a fancy idea of rook takes a6 in many lines, but uh, the problem is not uh, is not bishop takes a6, but is you know sometimes black will feel feel bad after just a the move. There is not much for the rook to do there. Okay, so now saying that I will I'm tempted by playing rook takes a6. But I think I have to take with the bishop, which is a bit sad. Yeah, and check and queen takes a6 looks looks logical. He hasn't castle yet, which makes it um, which makes it a bit uncomfortable for white to play. But uh, yeah, looks good for white all in all. On the other hand, it's, you know, it may look good, but you have to play moves. He plays bishop c3, which is uh, very, very logical. Does he want to castle long at some point? It's hard to believe, to be honest. Okay, so how should we play this? Maybe just rook e8, bishop f8, like let him play moves. By the way, d7 is sort of hanging here. Okay, let's go to d8 then. Plays knight f4. Okay. So now we can... Um, yeah, we have moves. We can even play knight before. We can also play bishop f8 simply. Okay, so let's say bishop f8. He probably just wants to play queen d3 and uh, castle then. Making sure he's never worse. Yeah, this is not kind of kind of an opening you, you should play against a strong player. On the other hand, I played it against Nakamura. <laughs> So it's not that I don't think he's a good player. <laughs> what I like is that with the bishop on f8, there is not much to blunder. Like we prevented all the knight h5 stuff. Yeah, he simply plays a3, literally asking for knight b4 in some of the lines. Wow, a3 is a bit surprising. This this basically means he, he does not really know what to do. He's probably try, trying to prepare some uh, castling long or um, um, 
Yeah, or maybe rook d1. We can play knight b4, takes, takes a4, and then something like rook d2 c8. Shouldn't be too good, shouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, on the other hand, like whatever we play, queen d3 is still there. So yeah, I mean, in general, we have to do something, unfortunately. Okay, we cannot wait, wait forever. Let's go knight before. Bishop before, c before, a4, and then something like b3 maybe, or rook d to c8. Okay, we have queen d3 in all, in all of these lines. But yeah, I mean, black should probably hold there. He, he keeps uh, thinking what makes me feel nervous. Like, what else do you consider? No, there's nothing. Okay, it takes. Queen d3. Okay, this is basically a draw for. Um, Yeah, okay. Have to have to go for it. I mean he probably wants to to play this a little. Claiming that it is not exactly a draw. Mm. Okay, let's say bishop d6. Yeah, what I'm doing is uh, is actually strange. Yeah, I blundered the pawn actually. Can I take on h2 there? No, no. Yeah, somehow I was not ready for playing this 4 against 4. Now I have to work. Yeah, bishop d8. d5. Yeah, then he will get um, knight b8 or this way, yeah, and he can play forever. <laughs> this is not exactly what you want from the Bunter Blitz, I must say. Okay. E4 is a bit of a relief. I mean, the move is completely fine, but at least he he's not trying to wait for 50 moves to improve. Yeah, maybe check. I guess we simply trade. Yeah, and then we start waiting somehow. I mean, whenever he goes too far with the king, there is bishop e1. Okay, then we have a check. Yeah, I can probably even play f6. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah, takes, takes. Makes it a bit easier. Keep waiting. Keep waiting. I mean, I could have played g5 probably, but I don't want to do such thing uh, down to like one second. So I'll just, I'll just prefer to uh, to wait and gain some time. Knight g2, okay, king f5 maybe. Knight g3, maybe king f6 even. And bishop a7. Maybe king e6. King e6 was not brilliant, by the way. I'm actually about to let him 
like let him get exactly what he's trying to get, which is still a draw. But um, less comfortable draw, I would say. Maybe I could have taken, but once again with five seconds, you don't want to do such thing. He's actually sh short on time now as well. This allows bishop e7. Okay, go back. Bishop d4, I think we had this already. Bishop c3 maybe. Brings knight to f1, okay. And g4. g4 is a relief. Now it has to be even more simple. I think we pretty much wait whatever happens. Okay, king uh, maybe f6. Bishop to c7. There is not much going on here. Okay, maybe king f5, king e6. Bishop d8. Now we wait this way. Okay. Okay, king f7. You got this, but this is still, you know, very drawish. Okay, whatever. Is there a 50 move rule here? He He's playing a bit like Nihal Sarin, to be honest. He sort of plays like a chicken. Then he gets this, you know, dead draw with a little chance, and then he, he tries to play it forever. Pretending he's better. Okay. Thanks for the game and no 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 offense to Nihal. It's not that he always plays this way. But sometimes it happens. Alright, so this will be it for uh for today, I believe. So thanks uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh see you soon at Chess24.